so because because I personally uh, was not interested in. Oh, by the way, you guys know. Debrief afterwards, okay? Otherwise, it'll take us forever to get through this. Um, I did not really want to say that why he equal this, therefore this equals that. And I didn't have quite enough space unless I wrote really small to say this. Oh, I did that. Right? <laughs> that, that I think, that, by the way, that's the next best thing. But, um, or maybe the best thing. But anyway, um, this is what I elected to do. You got all your functions there. So here are our derivatives. Um, 4 cos 4x. 3e to the x, 1 plus x. Just note here, right? You guys, I hope, have heard me say this enough times. You look at the question, um, is factorization necessary here? Is factorization necessary here? Now, let's point out, right? Because I want you guys to not just be, I've said this many times, I don't want you just to be uh, you know, machines that are just after marks and that kind of thing. I want you mathematicians simplify. <coughs> excuse me, we know. Simplify, we know, is a dangerous word. We, we kind of have to have it because it does catch everything that we need. Where you see, you know, where necessary, right? I don't think, uh, let's just write this without having um, um, factorize it. I don't think 3e to the x plus 3x e to the x is necessarily all that much worse than what I've written over here. In this context, right? Now, it would be a completely different matter if part two was, hence, find the stationary points, okay? Clearly then, factorizing is of an advantage. But here, you know, at different points in your mathematical career, simplify doesn't mean factorize. Simplify means expand, right? Simplify means everything. So in this case, don't take off any marks if it's not factorized. I factorize because, well, you need to be, yeah, it is prettier. Um, and you, need, you do need to be good at factorizing, so there's no reason not to practice that skill. Okay, uh, 2x on x squared minus 9. Yep. Um, 3 plus sec squared. Shh. And then here's my use of product rule. Are you happy with all those? Looking good? Cool. Still right. Yeah. Okay. At the right time. Okay, so what did I do here? What what was my technique for going through this question? What was I trying to identify? I was trying to identify f dash on f. That's what I'm looking for, right? Uh, it's tricky now. Now that we know, the more knowledge you have, the more you kind of have to sift through it and think, wait, is this, is it inverse tan? <laughs> okay, because you see x squared and stuff on the bottom. It's not inverse tan. You need to be able to tell the difference between them. I multiply it through by a half and two, just so I got the numerator exactly like I want to write it. But if you went straight here, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, here's my definite integral. So again, I've elected to the one third three business. You have a look down at that denominator. Sorry, not that denominator. My final answer. Again, I've just left it like that rather than taking out an additional factor. What do you think? Remember that? Or do you think, do you think this is better? Uh, what am I going to get? E, Q, what, do, what do you think? Uh, two. How did you, how far did you go? Oh, is it? okay, you ran another step. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say, I think for, I did that right, yeah? Am I, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I'm going to say, I, I think this line is fine, okay? Because if they, where could this possibly go? Where could this question go? Um, unlike the previous question where it's like, oh, solve for something, there's nothing left to solve for. That's just a number. Like, you're not going to oh, say, oh, I can factorize and find when that's equal to zero. It better not be equal to zero. It's a value. If I go to my calculator, is it faster to enter in this line versus this line? And so they look to me pretty much identical because you're going to have to do e to the something twice anyway. So I think it's fine. And I, I think it's a little excessive to go difference of squares on that next line, but anyway. Okay, let's go over here. Ah, oh, sorry, difference of cubes. Um, here's my solution. Now, you can see, this is, what do we, what do we call these? What do we, what do we name, do we give these things? We call them equations that are, it's not a quadratic, but it's reducible to a quadratic, which is why I've then gone ahead and, um, and factorized just like I would for a normal quadratic. 
Obviously, you could do a substitution if you like, but it just takes me a couple extra lines. Okay? Year 12. You guys know, I want you to discuss this and debrief this. I want you to have that conversation. Just not right now while I'm explaining it to you. Okay? Now, um, it is critical, it's critical that this is somewhere in this. If this was two marks, um, one of the marks would be there, right? You cannot simply um, go to this line. That's a big, big no-no. And even, even doing this, it's better than going than skipping the two solutions, but it's still a bit, yeah, but why? You know, like, you understand why. Tell me why. And there are different reasons for why at different points. So I think, I think you should really have it in full there. Um, and then, of course, you uh, take logs of both sides, and that gives you log two. Okay. Uh, that was just... <laughs> this was the do I remember sigma notation oh question. Okay. Uh, 27? Yeah. Did I get it? Like a really big number. Sure. So, just to remember... And, and hopefully me writing it, whoops, I didn't want to raise. Um, hopefully me writing it like this makes it clear. This is an AP, right? So if it's like, oh, from three to, as Nikita was just suggesting, 500, okay? Um, that's a different question altogether. That one is not going to be worth one mark. That's testing something else, isn't it? That's testing, do you recognize that it's an AP? Uh, and then do you know what to do with that and use the right formula, etc. okay? Um, though for what it's worth, I mean, you could still, you didn't have to use the formula. You could say, if it's an AP, I could do first and last term, and then take the average of however many pairs there are, right? So you, you know what to do. There. Okay, let's have a look at this guy. So, uh, here's my here's my answer. 2 pi on 3, people happy with that? Yep, or, or 120 degrees is fine. There's nothing that forces you into either situation. Um, I will point out because before you launch into your working, it's important you see what's going on, right? The size of the largest angle is attached to... It's going to be opposite the larger side. And drawing the diagram makes that very, very obvious, right? Even if you didn't see that immediately, okay? So you go ahead and draw that. It tells you where you are so you know that you want C or B or whichever angle you're naming it to be the opposite one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You could... Um, in fact, the first time I wrote these solutions, I literally wrote here, sorry, um, just above before I start the cosine rule, I would say the largest angle... Um, is opposite, blah, 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 blah. So that sentence sort of acts as this diagram for me. Um, but I would say, just looking at this question, based on two marks, no one's going to lose marks for not including that line. But like I said, we want to be sound mathematicians, not just go for the marks. So I think that's a great thing to include. That or the diagram. Um, oh, I think I had radians there before and I accidentally rubbed it off. Um, you can just write 2 pi on 3. 2 pi on 3 is fine. Um, but being that here I've presented the contrast of two things, I've, I've just named it. Okay. Alright, now, for the geometry question, I am very open to if someone has a faster proof for this, because this is not the fastest proof, this is just the first proof that I thought of. Okay. Does that look about... Now, just shh, let me explain. I'll show you the way... By the way, I mean, we've done, we've done so many geometry questions. Um, it's worth me looking at this again because, you know, we forget this as um, extension students. Here's the way, like, go right back to nuts and bolts, right? Here's the way I approach a question like this, okay? I pretty much figure that personally, I've got like a 10 to 15% chance max at starting to write down stuff and picking a, a reasonably efficient path right from the beginning. Right from like, oh yeah, I know what I'm writing over here and I take a good path through. I think it's much more efficient for me, just like, you know, when you spend reading time planning out your essay, right? I go to my diagram and hey, if you don't have a diagram, draw a decent diagram. And I think, okay, what am I going to work with here? Okay, I want this triangle over here to be equilateral. There are two paths to proving that a triangle is equilateral. They are angles and sides, right? I want all the angles, I want all the sides. Which one's going to be easiest for me, okay? Now, I look at this and I think, yeah, probably gonna be angles, right? So, um, the reason I'm thinking that is because this parallelogram gives me lots of equal angles all over the place. It gives me equal sides too, which I'm gonna use, but it's harder to get to um, some of these without going by angles first. So you might as well do angles. So therefore, having thought about that, here was the path my brain took. I said, okay, parallel, parallel. That gives me this angle over here. 
which means, again, using the same parallel lines, that gives me the angle over here. Yep, yeah, follow with me. Again, going back to the parallelogram, this equal side over here equals this too. So now I know it's at least it's isosceles. If it's isosceles, I've got equal angles opposite equal sides, and the two angles gives me the third angle, or I could, any path I like, I've got my angles, I've done. Okay. So, here's my wording now. This is three marks. What do you think we're looking for? What kinds of properties are going to get used by everyone in the room? Yeah. No. Okay, so, so, so. Like, yeah, yeah, say it again. Yep. Okay, the answer is no. Uh, it's a good question to ask. And the, the answer is no because it is not given. Um, the diagram, the diagram tells you that. Right? And in fact, as we know, like I mean, we've known it for so long, it's like, duh, but it's not. That's a property, isn't it? That's a property, and so therefore, just like every property... Okay, yeah. Okay, now guys, guys, being that it's a three mark question, I'm not going to have the discussion about you. Like, and these marks are not anything, right? You, you make a judgment. I'm just going to say to you guys, generally speaking, what you're looking for are, okay, do they have some properties of a parallelogram? They can't just, as we've just said, assume everything about a parallelogram. Do they have some properties of parallel lines? Because they have to be used somewhere. Stuff like alternate angles and co-interior angles, right? And then us, there's some properties about the triangle, right? So here are my properties of a triangle which I've used. Do you see that? Um, I, I, obviously there are other ways, but I don't know if there's a faster way. So that's, that's three things right there. Do you understand parallelograms? Do you understand parallel lines? Do you understand triangles? Okay, and then do you state all of that? Uh, there will be, you know, finicky bits, which maybe it's two, maybe it's three, whatever. You make a judgment on your friend's paper and then go from there. But that's, do you see how we're crafting a question? And when we say, oh, three marks, we are not going to write the 150 different ways there are to prove this. We're looking for major categories of thought. Okay, so that's that. And last one, here we go. Uh, zero two. Yep. yep. You happy with that? You can see there's some irrelevant information in the question. Can tell me? Can someone tell me what is a piece of irrelevant information? This constant over here. We don't care about that because if it's parallel, that line can be shifted anywhere you like. The important number is the gradient, right? Once you've got that, you do it like this. You get your x value out, and then you substitute back in. Yes, yeah, that's right. And once you've got it, here's my um, here's my proof. There's the point that I said, uh, five x comma two. Sorry, let me make it a bit bigger for you. That's my zero two point. And if you really want to see the tangent, there it is. And they are looking pretty parallel to me.